Welcome back to the workshop. A different workshop. A workshop that you might recognise. It was a journey to get here. We drove from England down to France, then we drove around Europe, we visited family, and then we drove back to France, flew from France with... Our dog Cra- uh, wrong one. Our dog Crazy. Over to Chicago, and then from Chicago at 10pm we got in a rental car, drove down to St. Louis, Missouri, where we trialled with Crazy, and did our PSA PDC. We then drove to Seymour, Missouri, where I took a dog training class with Bart and Michael Bellin, and then after 20 hours in the car, over the last couple of days, we've made it up to Montana, and here in this workshop, the man who has been keeping this running, making beautiful tools, is Sam. Hello, Sam. Hi. Tell us about yourself. Well, my name's Sam. I'm a native Montanan, and I've been working here for a few years now, and I'm also employee of the month. Every month. So since I've been gone, Sam, you've been making hammers. Yep. A lot of hammers. Oh, yeah. How many? A little over 500 or so. And that's an incredible achievement because you started making the hammers while I wasn't even here. So you had to do a lot of experimentation and learning to get up to speed on that. And that's been a challenge, right? It has. When I started working here, I had never used a belt grinder before. And now I'm teaching our new employee to do all the grinding for me. So that's been a journey. And how many reject hammers have we made that haven't passed the bar? Enough to make me sad. Each hammer is forged in two heats and it takes roughly six minutes of forging per hammer, but it only takes like one miss hit with a hammer to totally ruin it. And so it's a huge challenge and you have to be so accurate with the hammers and the press. Mm. It's, 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 a, it's a ridiculously difficult product to make. Consistently and yeah, it, it, it's tough. But the fact that you can make a hammer in two heats to me is shocking. I was never able to make a hammer that fast. I know you've got the process down and I want to see with my eyes and I want to share with you guys how do you make hammers? Well, I mean, first things first, we're gonna light the forge and we're gonna change the tooling on the hammers. I quickly got to interrupt us to thank today's sponsor, which is uh, Black Hole Battery Drainer. So if you're sick and tired of having a full battery, this will drain your... No, it's not Black Hole Battery Drainer. It's Raid Shadow Legends, but you knew that because it is everywhere. It's the first game to bring a console level experience to your phone. They're here, they're here to stay. And with hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop champions, and raid your way. And now I think they've set the bar incredibly high for the graphics and weapons and character designs in game. I'm always inspired by the swords and armor within. And this month there is a ton happening in raid, so it's a great time to get started as they have new champions and update to the tag arena and a full schedule of special events and tournaments. They're currently running a very special Deliana Chase event where new and existing players can get their hands on the amazing Deliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and July 20th and you'll get Deliana for free. For all you new players, once you get in-game, use code Deliana20 to get tons of good stuff. But you'll get even more when you click my link in the description or scan the QR code. You'll get champions Misery Cord, Tiger Soul and Romero, 10 Magic XP Brew, 10 Force XP Brew, and 10 Spirit XP. XP brew. So please go check them out. Links below, QR code on screen. Let's get back to the video. Get new rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days. Special thing to mention, who is this? This is Bella. She's the new mascot here. So when we're making hammers, I use all three machines in one heat. I go from the Chambersburg to the press to the Ain Yang. It's crazy. Oh my goodness, look at how much those kiss blocks have swollen. I think they've work hardened like a little bit. Now I haven't noticed much change in dimension. This is like the most excellent tool for if you want to forge two dimension. Like a, a good kiss block system is so nice. So this is the punch for punching the eyes and the hammers. It's go time! The steel is hot! I am extremely excited to see this. This is gonna be quite the spectacle. So right off the bat for the first tee, this is what we're starting out with. Some two inch round, 1045. Approximately four inches long for a 3.5 pound hammer. First thing I do is I go over to the Chambersburg and use those kiss blocks to forge it to dimension that, I call it a soft octagon, a square with the corners taken off pretty aggressively. And then after that, I'll take this over to the hydraulic press 
and punch the eye using the hammer eye punch tooling. Sometimes when you punch the hammer eye, the billet can get a little bananaed or bowed. And I'll just give it a little kiss with the chambers burn. Then I'll take it over to the Ang Yang that has those sharp, narrow fullers. I'll isolate material for the cheeks and just kind of separate the cheeks from the faces. Get it rough forged in there. Unbelievable! I cannot believe it, Sam. That's one heat. It's a busy heat for sure. Yeah! Oh, wow! Well done. That's only half of it, so I'm gonna run through a few hammers. We'll change the tooling and then we'll finish them out. Making these hammers under open dies is not easy. And it tells you a lot about the fortitude of Sam, that despite the fact that the failures and rejects are a part of it, that he is all too aware of, that he experiences every single day. Those hammers keep rolling out. Frickin' awesome work, Sam. All right, Sam, after your first heat, what do you need to change for heat number two? So we're gonna take the kiss blocks off of the Chambersburg. And we're gonna put these fullers on. This is what spreads the cheeks out on the hammers. I'm gonna change the tooling in the press. It's got the, the punching jig in there right now. We're gonna swap that out for our drifting jig and then we should be good. So for heat number two, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drift the hammer eye using this short drift here. As that drifts in the hammer, I'm gonna take it under the big fullers of the Chambersburg, drift out one side of the cheeks. I'm gonna knock the drift out. I'm gonna drift the hammer through the other side and draw out the other half of the cheeks, take the drift out again. Then I'm gonna refinish the troughs of the hammer and then touch mark it. Another big heat. Yes, it, this is a bigger heat than the first one if you can believe it. That is four gorgeous hammers. They're gorgeous, Sam. Lovely work. Which one do we grind up? This guy is probably my favorite from today. I've never seen anybody grind a hammer so far. Well, you do several hundred of them. You tend to pick up a thing or two. That was so. insane. So we've got our oxypropane torch set up right here. And then all you need are some tongs and I can heat up the faces and heat treat it. And 1045 is super forgiving steel. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up both faces and then quench it in water and then it's ready to temper. Sam, that is awesome! I had no idea that you were doing both faces at the same time. Yeah, that was really recent. I was just getting really tired heat treating, and I wanted to be less tired. <laughs> you hear that? It's music to my ears. So we're gonna put this in our Paragon heat treating oven, sold at alexsteelshop.com, alexsteelco.com, whatever one you plug in to the URL. Honestly, heat treating ovens are probably one of the most underrated tools in the shop, especially for 
when you're doing knives and things, getting like a very precise heat treat. I, I am, a, I am a huge fan. It'll be in the temper oven for two hours at 400 degrees and then it's ready to refinish and get a handle on it. So in a couple of hours, you can kind of get to grips with things. Yep, all right. The hammer is done with the temper, so we're gonna head over into the grinding room, get the sanding scratches going in a nice direction, and then it's ready to put a handle on. So this is how our hammer handles start out. Uh, I make these next door in the wood shop area. They're pretty close to final shape. There's a gentle taper right here. The slot's been cut for the wedge and the corners have already been routered. So I just gotta fit it up up here to the eye of the hammer and then just kind of smooth out the handle. That's about it. We've got our handle put on, so now it's time to char and tar and finish it out. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take this PB blaster and I'm gonna put a little on both of the faces of the hammers to protect them from the flame. When you burn a fuel, you create CO2 and water, and if you do not protect these nicely finished faces, they're gonna instantly rust if they come in contact with the flame because of the water that's produced and that chemical reaction but just a little bit of PB blaster on both of the faces is enough to protect them from mildly oxidizing. Now I just leave it sit for a few minutes, give that pine tar a few minutes to soak into that wood and then wipe off the excess, paste wax the face, and then it's done. Sam, it's a gorgeous hammer, and I'm so grateful for all your hard work making these for our customers. Well, thank you very much. These hammers are an absolute blast and a joy to make. It's rewarding to make a tool for you guys to use in your own shops. Be sure to follow the company on Instagram, Alex Steel Co. We do a bunch of giveaways and a lot of behind the scenes stuff here in Montana. We're gonna be making some fun videos while I'm here. We'll hopefully see Will, and I hope that you check out today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, down below, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.